Hello and welcome to You Are Human, a show attempting to decode human potential and possibilities by bringing you real stories, real heroes. Since the time we are born, our identity is somewhat created. What faith will we belong to? What culture will we follow? What language we speak? Even sometimes the way we dress. And as we grow, we keep adding layers to our own personality and identity. But the basics remain more or less the same. Today with me is someone who has created an absolutely different identity of himself. Let's welcome Oliver Allen. Hi, Jagriti. Hello, Oliver. How are, How are you? Good, thank you. Thank you so much for being on my show. It's my pleasure. <laughs> so as I said in my introduction that we, you know, our identity is somewhat created since the minute we are born. Yeah. And you were born in a British home, if I can say you're a white guy. <laughs> yep, white guy, white, white. <laughs> From the looks of it as well. Um, but you changed, you know, yourself, your identity. You recreated an identity for your own self. You embraced Arabic as a language. You embraced the Omani culture. Mm. Not just the language, but the way you dress, even the faith. So, if you could say, how did this happen? Because it's not just a road less traveled, but it's a road that has never been traveled. So, if you can please tell us more. So, I, th I think the topic, firstly, I think that's a very interesting question. And if I was in your shoes, I'd definitely want to know the, the, the story behind it all. Um, I think the topic of identity is very interesting because, yes, we are, as you said, from the moment we're born, we, we're... We're given our religion, hmm. we're given our nationality, we're given our, our ethnicity, yes. our culture, our race. Maybe our race is maybe a topic we can go into a bit, but essentially we're given all of these things. Hmm. We, we don't choose them. I think with regard to identity, um, sometimes we make a, uh, not a bigger deal out of it than we should. But I think identity is a lot more simple than we than we make it out to be. For instance, my identity is I'm Oliver. Mm. I don't really think too much about am I this or am I that? Am I British or am I Omani or am I... I, I, I think of myself as me. And, and I think that a lot of the time identity is defined for somebody by other people. Mm. Some people might look at me and say, oh, he's, he's a Brit. Mm. Omani's will say, he's, he's yes. a Brit, he's British. Yeah. British people think I'm something else. <laughs> They think I'm a bit weird. Um, Who is this? What is this? <laughs> yeah, no, no. They, they, they seriously will... They don't think I'm British mm. for one reason or another. So they, they have kind of um, an identity for me. He's mm. whatever. This group of people say he's British or he's this or he's that. So I, I think, as I say, that um, a, a lot of these things are in, in some ways given to us by other people. And... Is it like created in our own head? Like for me, Sometimes. your identity would be something that I create in my head. Is that what you're trying to? Yeah, 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 kind of. So, sometimes other people do it for you yes. as well. Yeah. Um, I, I'll give you an example. Like you, you have people from, I'll give you a good example. Hmm. Do you like tennis? Tennis? Mm. No. I don't really like tennis. Have you heard of Andy Murray? No. <laughs> okay, so he's a tennis player. He's, okay. he's British, but he's Scottish. Okay. Okay. So... The, the British media, mm. whenever he wins, they identify him as British. Right. So they can associate with him. Yes. Uh, he's one of us. He won. Yeah. When he loses, he's Scottish. <laughs> so the identity changes. So we based choose on as for our comfort. Yes. Yeah. What suits us. Yeah. Sometimes. Yeah. Sometimes. Yeah. So as, as for me and my transformation, <laughs> somebody referred to it as something funny once. They called it a transition. Transition. Which is an uh, interesting uh, <laughs> phrase to use. I don't. When I, I understand, it's a bit. I'm different. Hmm. It's, it's a, what, what's the expression used? It's a path never traveled. It's a choice. Yeah, it's, it's a road less traveled. Yeah, or less traveled or maybe never traveled. So hmm. I, I get it. It's weird, but when you sit back and, and kind of break it down and, and think about it, hmm. I'm a person who. Okay, I was born in the UK, and I am British. I, I was born in the UK and I moved to Oman when I was very young mm. and I was raised in Oman and I kind of learned the, or, 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 I, again, I don't want to say became Omani because mm. I, I haven't really become Omani, but I, I 
I, I learned the local language. Yeah. I wear this dasha mm. because it's comfortable. Yeah. <laughs> and I, 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 did, I did convert to Islam mm. again after a long, long journey. Yeah. Um, so I don't know if, if it's, it's kind of weird, but at the same time, if you think about it, I don't think it's that weird. Because it's definitely not weird. Mm. But as I said in the intro, that it's not something that anybody has done. Mm. So what? Not made this way you, around, at least. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. It's usually the other yeah, way around, exactly. you know. I don't know because I I think immigration and this idea of people moving from one place to another and settling elsewhere and changing their ways is not it's nothing new. Hmm. Um, yes, I, I do think, as we just said, though, maybe because it's this way around, it's kind of a bit like attracting whoa, whoa. more attention. Yeah, yeah. Per se, something like that. But as for what made me. I guess the reasons I I I I, I put forward just now. I moved here. I grew up here. Mm. I felt at home in Oman, and I knew I knew from a young age that I didn't want to go and live in the UK. Mm. But, you know, I was settled here more mm. or less. So the, these changes, if you like, kind of took place over a long period of time. And I, again, like I don't really think about them that much. But now right. you ask me, I'm I, I, <laughs> it's, uh, I'm thinking about them. I mean, I. I wanted to learn Arabic because it's, it's the language of the, the country mm. that I called home. Mm. So for me, that was a big thing, like to be able to, if, if I'm going to call this country my home, I want to speak Arabic. Correct. Right? Correct. Um, that was probably the main factor, factor that made me want yeah. to make more of an effort to learn it. Yeah. Obviously, my friends, my friendship group and my, my friends until now are mainly Omanis. Mm. So that helped, but it was also a motivation, yeah. I would say. Yeah, it, yeah, I didn't want to be the odd one out who didn't understand. <laughs> so for the language that that motivated me, for other things like wearing dashdasha, honestly that came later. I think dashdasha. I think after I converted, hmm. I started wearing dashdasha sometimes when I go to the mosque hmm. because it, when you do the ablution and stuff, hmm. the it's easier if you're wearing the stash and step yeah. off your flip flops and yes, <laughs> and so it was like a matter of practicality. And then I kind of started thinking like, oh, this is quite comfortable, right? Instead of wearing jeans and yeah. socks and shoes and whatnot, so I just wear the stash. Yeah, but I I don't really associate it that much with like it's not. I can understand maybe people looking from the outside will say, oh, he's, he's but own you and stuff. don't think that you've done something really different? No, really. I just, I'm me, you know. I, yeah, it's you. It's you but I, I get I get it. Though. People looking from the outside would find it a bit weird right. or different, let's say. Yeah. Mm. Do you believe that we're all souls? You believe in the concept of souls? Yeah, yeah. Do you think we as souls have an identity? No, right? We, or <laughs> very, very good question. Um, because we started about identity. Soul, I mean, is it what we create? in mm. our own heads of other people. And of course, I have an identity from ethnicity, language I speak yeah. and everything. But if I think of the concept of souls, does my soul have an identity? Maybe, but not from the offset. Hmm. It has an identity which is shaped by the events of, of our doings, of, of our life, of hmm. our doings, yeah. Hmm. But I, I feel like I, our identity is maybe deeper than the things we we mentioned like race and the facade that we and, carry. exactly yeah. that's like the the outer layer if the you outer like. layer. but like, there's there's yeah. a lot more depth to it i think than Absolutely. than that with regard to identity yes mm. yes so you grew up in a british home yeah? yeah now because when i asked you that yes you know your parents are still here and it's just very recently that you moved out but you were living with them yeah. so have any dynamics at home changed because of your choices because now you speak more Arabic and you yeah. follow a different faith, you know. Yeah. Has, has any dynamics changed or your parents are, okay, your life, whatever you're doing, it's okay. Nothing's changed from that. I don't think anything's changed. Mm -hmm. Not not in the sense, not not because of me, like I, my transformation, whatever you want to call it. <laughs> me, me being a bit different to them hasn't changed the dynamics. Yeah, because um, you're the same person at the end. Yeah, and yeah. I, they always used to tell me like, you're always a bit different from the beginning anyway, yeah. from when you were young. They, they, used to, they used to tell me that even when I was very young, I would mm. speak English very strangely, like with mm. a strange accent. Mm. Well, I was influenced by my friends, I think. Mm. So the answer, I guess, to the question is not, not really. The dynamics yeah. haven't changed. Yeah. And it's, it's very much you, with regard to religion, do, do your own thing. Right. There's no interference. And there's, it's really fine. Alhamdulillah. In terms of, alhamdulillah, in terms of your value system, mm. 
uh, of course, because you were telling me when we were discussing about the podcast, you told me that when you moved out to the UK and to US to study and when people would ask yeah. you about Islam, you didn't have a lot of answers. And they were curious because you came from the Middle East, and which is general, it's okay. And then you got deeper into studying it, reading it. And then now you have converted and you are accepting that faith and the religion. Do you see a change in your value system before and now? Or is it just that, yes, you have a better knowledge, but do you feel a change in your value system? You know, I don't see or do, I don't feel a huge change, mm -hmm. to be honest. I don't think that I've changed that much. Certainly my personality hasn't changed. Right. I don't think I've changed in my kind of outward appearance. I mean, leaving aside the stash. What you wear. The, the, the way you treat people. Because that wasn't related to, it mm -hmm. wasn't, it wasn't related to religion, but that's a, another story. Yeah. <laughs> um, no, I, I don't think, I think the, the change has been very much internal. Hmm. It's been more more spiritual, right. uh, internal peace and not, and whatnot. But in terms of the way I deal with people, or treat people, it hasn't it hasn't changed. Hmm. My parents, yeah, and alhamdulillah, they did a good job <laughs> yes. of, of yes. raising me. So yeah, I'd like to think I haven't I haven't changed uh, in, in that regard a whole lot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> because when we grow spiritually we do add some more qualities to ourselves. So I was asking in that relation, like in terms of your value system and your own personal growth, mm. because of this, like, do you see some changes in you? There are changes, as I say, like internally, I, I definitely feel like I became a lot more positive mm -hmm. in, in general. Like I, I would treat any situation that happened to me or anything at all, I, I would try and look at it uh, in a positive aspect right. whereas before it might get me down why has this happened why has it happened to me yeah. uh, and so on and so forth i would say after after converting i became a lot more positive hmm. the way it, maybe not in the way i treat people but perhaps the way that i i i i, th I think of people i as we say in Arabic, sometimes it happens, I forget the English. Like I... Uh, <laughs> Respond to... No, like if someone does something that might appear negative, I I try and look for the good in it. I right. always try and look for the good in other people, yes. in the actions. And mm. I started to really love a lot of things and, and appreciate a lot of things. So I started to, to really... Uh, sounds weird, but to love myself mm. and to love life and love everything. Mm. Yeah. So that's that's what I say when I well that's what I mean when I say it was quite internal. Yeah. 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 Wow. Um Oman and the people of Oman are usually very warm and welcoming. Mm. You know, this country is just like so wonderful. Um I'm sure that you have always been welcomed in this country and by its people, but now because you are so much like them, like the locals, what kind of doors has this opened for you? The language has, has opened so many doors yeah. in particular. Um, I feel like the more I, I well, the, the more my language improved mm. as time went on, the more that helped me make connections with people. Mm. But particularly people perhaps whose, Omanis I mean, whose first language is Arabic. I mean, obviously we know there are many Omanis who speak English as a first language yeah. and are more westernized. So me being able to speak Arabic helped me maybe make deeper connections and relationships with um, Arabic speaking Omanis. Right. Um, and in turn, that helped me kind of uh, get more into the culture. Hmm. And as time went on, I don't know when exactly, but hmm. I started to feel as if people treated me like one of one of them. I didn't <laughs> feel that I was any different. And I, I never liked that when I was younger, mm. if, if I'd be made to feel different or stand out. I don't like standing out. Mm. Maybe it's because I'm shy. I, I don't know. Like, I, I didn't like that. So, as I say, with, with, with this language came more immersion into the culture and a, a feeling of acceptance, if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. Are you a shy person? Because you said because you're shy. Yeah, very shy. Introvert? Are you an introvert? Um. Sometimes I feel like I am. Sometimes I feel like I'm not. I really don't know. So if you're in a room of, say, 20 people, would you, would it make you nervous? Or? Not necessarily, but I wouldn't go to the middle. I'd always stand on the side. <laughs> I am shy. Yeah. 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 
<laughs> it's just strange though. I, I was at one point very shy to a point where I couldn't talk in front of people. Mm. Now I can talk in front of a group of people. Yeah. Um, like I could present, mm. but I still am shy and I'm, I'm very quiet. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> wow. So um, again, we'll go back to identity. You grew up as a Brit child. Brit. Yep, a Brit. <laughs> um, and you said that you were still looking for belongingness. Like you were always treated that, oh, you don't yeah. belong here, you're different. Do you think now you've found your own identity and you feel that, okay, now I finally belong? Do you have that kind of a <sighs> yes. relief? You know, yeah. that now I know. Uh, that's exactly what I have. And this experience that I had it w isn't or wasn't unique to me. Mm. I know for a fact a lot of the the kids I went to school with, because mm. we went to international school. Yeah. A lot of the kids I went to school with, particularly ones who were born in Oman mm. or lived in Oman since a young age, or even been outside of their own countries for many, many years, often had the same issue. They didn't know where they belonged. And when I was when I was younger, growing up here, mm. I had that thing. I didn't really know where I belonged. I knew I was British mm. and I knew that ultimately I would go and live in the UK mm. after I finish uni or whatever. Mm. I, I knew I wasn't Omani. My friends at school were of all nationalities and all backgrounds and all religions and, and whatnot. And as I say, this experience was common to a lot of the a lot of my peers. Yeah. And I know for a fact that when they went back to their own countries to to study after after high school, I mean, they they struggled a bit, and I think until now they struggle yeah. because they they don't fit hundred percent in where they live or where they're from. Mm. They're not Omani. Mm. A lot of them obviously don't speak Arabic, mm. and they they have their connection with Oman, having been raised here, but they don't speak the language or have any deep connection. Mm. So that makes it difficult for them to connect with Oman. And they're, they're left stateless, kind of. <laughs> um, so from a young age, as I say, I, I had the same experience growing up. But I feel like now because I I took that path mm. and learned the language and so on and so forth, mm. that's helped me a lot with my identity. And I do feel, what, you, what's the expression you used? A peace or something. You said, peace? You said something like that. Like, do you find, just now, like, do you finally feel oh, like... Oh, do you find belongingness? And do you feel like, yes, I'm yeah, at peace right yes, now? Yes, that's yeah. exactly how I feel. And again, it's maybe ironic, because at the beginning I said a lot of these things, like language, religion, culture, right. clothing, right. unrelated to, to yeah. identity. But somehow, everything together has... has Making sense now? It all makes sense together. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah. Just out of curiosity, what language do you think in? In English or Arabic? English? <laughs> I, I think in English, but if I'm thinking about... A conversation I'm going to have mm. with somebody in Arabic. Mm. I'll think in Arabic. Right. But generally, I, I think in it. Sometimes I dream in Arabic, but most, mostly it's English. <laughs> My mother tongue. Well, I, as you, we just saw, I sometimes forget words. Yeah. And it gets very awkward. I, sometimes when I talk to my family in the UK, I obviously speak in English, but I, I'll find myself wanting to throw in a inshallah mm. or alhamdulillah. And then I realize. Yeah. They don't understand. Yeah. Um, like with my family here, it's fine. Like I, I just talk the way I talk. Yeah. But so, sometimes I have to tweak my, my English. <laughs> so even my best friends, they are in India. And sometimes when I speak to them, because in our day-to-day -day, uh, speech, we do in interactions, there's a lot of inshallah, alhamdulillah. Mm. So this is something that I say. And they would be like, what are you saying? And why are you saying this? So I was like, but it, it's it, because now it's just become a part of us. Of course. So we just use it. Of yeah, course. We just say it. Yeah. <sighs> wow. Um, what have, what, what, what are your wins that you would say? Because when we have lived a certain period of our lives, mm. um, we do tend to look back, and if we have made certain changes, and in the way people tell you transitions. <laughs> <laughs> um, what, of course, it, it wouldn't have been an easy process. Like, did you have any challenges per se, number one? And number two, mm. what would you say? Of course, you said that now you're at more peace, you're more positive. Mm. But what are your takes or wins from this entire choices of yours? So regarding challenges, I actually, it, it was quite easy. It was quite plain sailing. Like in terms of the language, I guess like with any language, there were hmm. difficulties along the way. Hmm. Maybe one challenge was, no, there was a challenge. Um, but the 
beginning, um, it's not so much a, a case now, but a few up until a few years ago, I'd find that people would still, even if they knew that I spoke good Arabic, uh, they would still see me as a British guy. Yeah. Meaning they would always switch to talk to me in English, which in itself is fine. Mm. There's nothing wrong with speaking English, but it would always make me again feel a bit like uh, mm. I'm different. Like I would talk to people in Arabic and they'd reply in Arabic and so on and so forth. And then when they'd find out I was a Brit, it was like they couldn't wrap their heads around the idea that I was British because speak Arabic or I was British, but was mm. different. So that would always slightly, I don't want to say annoy me, but it would, um, I don't know, it would, it would, it would irritate me a bit, mm. if, if that's the right word. Again, as I say, it would make me feel um, a bit different. I, that doesn't happen so much anymore. Yeah. I think maybe because people know me now, mm. they're used to the idea. <laughs> it's, it's nothing new to them. Yeah. Um, so I suppose that's regarding the challenge. language and some of the customs. In terms of the religion, there were no challenges. Mm. I thought there would be. I thought at the beginning when I started going to the mosque, mm. people would be like, people would look at me. What What's are you doing this here? White guy doing in the mosque. <laughs> um, but for whatever reason, they they didn't. Hmm. And I don't know if my the way I look, suddenly with a beard helps a bit. Hmm. I th I think a lot of the time, people think I'm Arabic, but from like Jordan or, or right, right, that, yeah. yeah, that direction. Yeah. So may maybe that's why I didn't get too many stares at the mosque. But overall, there weren't too many challenges. I, I was lucky. Um, wins. Do you mean apart from? Because as I mentioned, like my, my learning the language has helped me with my kind of immersion into the culture, right. which has in turn helped me feel um, at peace. Yeah. So I don't know, do you mean something aside yeah. from that? Yeah. Like you mentioned that you feel more at peace and positive. So. Well, I guess the religion itself is, is a win the way I see it. Yeah. Because it, uh, it was a very long part and whatnot, but it started with me learning Arabic and being here mm. and as I said ended with religion many 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 years later mm. um, <laughs> so that's a win yeah. there's going back though to challenges I remembered something um, when I was so we, we lived in the UAE when I was very young it was the first country we lived in mm. outside of the UK when I was when I was there I was surrounded by you know I was, I was five between five and eight so I was surrounded by um, Arabs Mm. and Muslims and even in my school it was like an Arabic school kind of mm. so I was one of the other ones out mm. in the class it was probably like 20 25 kids three three white people <laughs> so we used to we used to learn Arabic every day but we'd be put into special Arabic mm. and there was also a religious religious class I don't studies, know what they call it like religious studies, studies. Yeah. again so the, the Muslim students would do religious studies me and my two other friends would go out and play around <laughs> play around and color pictures in. They'd get the crayons out for us. Yeah. So I remember that point in my life as a young kid, it was a bit weird because I mean there's no better way to make you feel uh, make a kid feel like they're different than yeah than doing that. Sure. Um so I kind of at that point I felt um almost I got envious. Mm -hmm of my friends. It's like, why, why do all my friends get to go to this special class? Why do they all get to have one of these prayer mats? And why do they all get to do this chanting? And why do me and whoever it was yeah. have to sit and color things in? Like, and I guess that's being a kid. So that was challenging. And I guess the idea of feeling different started, started back then in those early years. Um, and that, that sticks in my mind. And it's something I always tell people. I, I, went, I remember going to my mom probably crying one day. I said, why, why can't I have a prayer mat like the other kids? And she, she explained to me, she said, because they're Muslim, so they have this special class for them. But you have a special class with your crayons. And then I remember going to my mom one day and saying, um, I, I want to change my name to Ahmed Hamdan. Really? <laughs> I have no idea why or where this name came from. It's, she said, oh, okay, of course, Danny. Stuck for like a day and then I went back to being Oliver. Um, so I, I, I guess that's being a kid, isn't it? You want to fit in. Um, so th th those are the challenges, I'd say. The gains, the biggest gain for me, aside from the stuff we talked about, I'd say is the religion, yeah. as far as I'm concerned. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs>
And I think that is um, one of the biggest wins because then that directs your entire life. And then you know like mm. what to follow in what direction. And I think that is important. Um, what is it that you're trying to achieve now? Because all this is done, right? Yeah. What is your way forward? Like, do you have a plan? Do you want to bring people to Oman to tell them about the culture? Or it's just something you did for yourself and you don't know what next? You know, your question got me thinking a lot, <laughs> I'll be honest. Um, I d at the beginning, I definitely did it for myself with no thought whatsoever about what I could give to other people. Um, now, when I think about it, there, there is an element of me wanting to showcase Oman. Because mm. I'm lucky, I have a platform on social media. True. And as we know, a lot of people outside of Oman, even inside of Oman, Omanis and non-Omanis sometimes don't appreciate Oman for what it is. Yeah. So that's something that I, I take a lot of interest in, mm. showcasing Oman, be it the culture or, or the, the natural beauty and mm. so on and so forth. That's something I try to do. Um, with regard to religion, um, and, until now, I haven't made a... It's not been something that's big on my mind, right. if I'm honest with you. Mm -hmm. Maybe maybe subconsciously, mm -hmm. sometimes I'll talk about things. Again, if we, if we look at my social media platform, I will talk about topics related to religion or I'll put a religious twist on it sometimes mm. maybe with, with the idea of getting a specific message mm. across and hopefully positively influencing people but as I say it's not something that's in, uh, up until this point in time big on my mind right yeah. right uh, I would like to know lastly one thing tomorrow in the future mm. you have a child daughter son whatever if he or she wants to come up with their own identity. Hmm. They like something else. Would you be okay with that? That's a very good question. And I think about it a lot. Because you do? my kids, for one thing, what are they going to be? Yeah. Depends, obviously, who I marry. Hmm. Um, but they're going to be British and half something else. They're probably going to be half something else. Hmm. I don't think that's a, that's a way of saying I'm not going to marry. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'll raise them... I'll raise them in the way that I believe is correct, mm. culturally, religiously, and so on and so forth. But I have to keep an open mind. You know, my, my family did the same for me. Mm. They let me go my own way. And they, they supported me. They said, as long as you're convinced by, by this, we're, we're with you. So I think for me to then perhaps go into it with a closed mind yeah. with regard to my own children wouldn't be, wouldn't be right. I mean, we all have a belief yeah. of some kind. And we, I think deep down we all believe that our belief is correct. Right. Um, I don't think there's anything wrong, though, with keeping an open mind. With regard to my kids, if at 18 they came to me and said... Because I mean, you asked about identity in general, right? So, so I mean, referring to maybe religion... Same, like the, the way you have made different choices. Yeah. If tomorrow they want to settle, say maybe they want to go to India, practice Hinduism or become Buddhist or not just trying free, to box a, them just in terms country. of religion. Yeah, exactly. Look, I'll raise my kids the way I see fit. And if at 18 they want to change something, they're not going to stop being my kid. Yeah, of course. I might not agree with everything. Yeah. yeah. But there's no harm. But they have their own journey. Yeah. Each person is their own person. So. Yeah. Yeah, that's, true. That, that's probably what I will do. I wish if everybody thought that way, then the world would be so amazing, right? If only. <laughs> we would not be fighting. If only. If only. If, if, only, only. if, only, if only. Thank you so much, Thank Oliver. You, this was amazing. I had a fantastic, Likewise. calm conversation. Mm -hmm. yeah. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for tuning in to today's episode. If it has inspired you even slightly, then please like, share, and comment. See you on the next one. Until then, remember, our time is limited. Let's make the most of it. Sahlan ma'akum Oliver. Tabi'uni fi barnamaj You Are Human. Wala tinsu, like, share, and subscribe.